Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. I've often talked about kind of the third dimension is a space where we experience polarity. We experience duality. When we start to move into the fourth dimension, that's a bridge into our open heart space, which the fifth dimension is that open heart space. It's the space of uh, synchronicity. It's the space where creation seems instantaneous. It's the space where um, you begin to have a new relationship with yourself at every level. You begin to appreciate and love and feel. Uh, and as you move into the sixth dimension, what you're opening up to is what I call the Arcturian space. And that is the level, if some of you see colors, that often shows up as kind of a purplish color, purplish hue. And it's often associated with the violet flame, which is uh, more of kind of a fifth dimensional place where your heart is opening to divine wisdom, divine intelligence, divine abundance, all of those things, mastery basically. Uh, as you move into the sixth and seventh dimension, you start to have a space where it is all about that Arcturian energy, which is, is the unmet self in many ways. It's, you have an understanding of uh, the self as you would from the observer consciousness. It's, it's knowing why you've done what you've done, how your life has become how it's become, but not having any judgment for, uh, you know, example, I, I shared on our last call my own situation of, of uh, you know, massive heart trauma and uh, obesity at a very young age and all of my health problems that ultimately left me bedridden, massive anxiety, depression, all of these things. And it's a space where you can look back at your stories and in a very strange way, appreciate them and say, you know what, I wouldn't change them because they led me to where I am today. And even, you know, when we're in the midst of those stories, we want nothing more than to be out. But as we begin to ascend through these vibrational levels of dimensions, we we gift ourselves the freedom to let go. We gift ourselves the freedom of non-resistance. We gift ourselves the freedom of acceptance, which then opens the door into that fifth, sixth, seventh dimension. And as we begin to expand out into the eighth and ninth, we open into what I call Palladian consciousness. And that's the space where it's all self-love. That's the space where um, it is complete knowing of the self as the individual, but also knowing of the self as source. And so it is the space of, it's kind of beyond ascended mastery, because in ascended mastery we are, um, we think in terms of maybe the flavor of us, our personality. This is that space where we, we still have that personality and that flavor, yet we are completely aware of the universality of all. We are completely tuned in, tapped into the completeness and the isness of source at every level. And it's all about pure divine self-love. And as we move out from that, 10th and 11th, we move into what I call Lyran consciousness and dimensions, which is simply all about the divine origin of being. And it's that space, that, that, that first time where we take a step out into individuation from source energy, be it this life, other lives, whatever it is, that first time. And it's that consciousness of stepping into and being birthed into physical form from a place of pure love. Now, where that comes into sound, many of you have been on calls with me where mm. we've talked about light language, we've talked about um, different different aspects, and even uh, going back and realizing that we are, you know, we are water and energy moves through water. That is a conductive element. And so being physical, sound is an energy that moves through. I, I spoke on our last call about how, uh, you know, NASA has gone out into space. Everybody used to think space was a vacuum. There was nothing. Different planets have actual sound emanating from them. The vibration gives off a sound. You're able to listen in. And it sounds a little bit like classical music, which is very interesting because there's a, mm. a mathematical yeah. equation to that as well, which tunes into our DNA. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is ways to, through simply listening to sound, um, through the vibration and the broadcast of frequency, it's it's literally as if you are given a remote control to a television where, you know, maybe before you had to get up and it was one of those old-fashioned TVs where it was, you had to crank the dial and there was lots of static everywhere with the rabbit ears and it's kind of like an upgrade where, you know, maybe before you had two or three channels, you had things were either great or they were awful or you had things mm. were, you know, just meh all the time. 
And this is like upgrading to, you know, 17,000 channels, and you get to choose anything you want at any given moment. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today is going through, particularly through the space of, of healing sound, because what sound does, and when I talk about the light language and, and language of light, things like that, we're talking about an innate knowing and a structure that exists within all of us. Like it's, if you look at, um, if you look at it from a mathematical level, which is, is to really bring it down into physicality, and so uh, it's, in a way, this is just kind of a metaphorical representation. If you look at the human form, there are, you know, we've sequenced genes, we've sequenced, mm-hmm. you know, we understand atoms, protons, electrons, neutrons, we understand all of that, and we can break those down into a mathematical uh, quantitative space. When we get into the realm of, you know, astrophysics, quantum physics, we begin to understand our universe in a much bigger and broader way. And we start to begin to understand it as everything is energy, everything is frequency. Everything has, as you observe something, you're also focusing on that thing. And by observing and focusing, you're bringing it into reality. And so through that, what we are able to realize is everything around you is literally a field of energy. So if you think of it in terms of like if I lived in an apartment building, so I am in my room, that room has its own field of energy that I'm broadcasting. My floor is the sum total of all of the of the different rooms on that floor and and it comes together to play a different sound the building is the sum total of all of the rooms on all of the floors and it comes together to play a sound the building is in a neighborhood that has a sum total of all of its sounds and so what we begin to realize is that that our body in some ways is like a sponge for energy and yet it is not just about soaking up what's around us it's literally it's a it's a two-way street there it's bringing in the vibration that we want, but also tuning our vibration so that we're emanating that vibration, which is how we begin to manifest it. And so as we start to tune frequency, as we start to work through sound, through music, through the vibration, through just just the sound of energy, which is, it can be anything and everything, um, you may hear some buzzing in your ears, you may feel some interesting sensations. Those are the spaces and places, if, if I were to say to you that every single segment of your life is a different musical instrument. So your career is an instrument, your love life is an instrument, your family life is an instrument, or or an instrumental section, because oftentimes there are many layers to all of those places and spaces. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we think of career as finance, but oftentimes career and finance within our energy bodies are split. So all of these things represent different sections of an orchestra. And your experience, your physical reality that you're living right now, is an experience of those vibrations all being broadcast out into the universe. And what we are learning and what we are realizing and understanding through science is that as you begin to change, and and we've been saying this in the energy field for a very long time, but now the science is catching up to match it. And what that is is that as you begin to change your vibration, you begin to change your reality. And what that means is that it's not just the thought that creates, it's beyond the thought. What does the thought generate in your field? If you think about... If I were to say, uh, you know, IRS, <laughs> most people go, uh, you can feel that <laughs> energy field. Like, you, you, you know, most people could just feel where that was. If I say um, puppies, most people have, mm. there's a thought that springs to mind, there's a visual image, but then there's an instant hit in your energy field associated with that. So we're looking at the thought that spawns the feelings, then the feelings that then spawn the, then we have, we have the feeling and then we go, oh God. What did I just, what, ooh, ooh, I don't want that. And so then we start, to think, we start to think about the feeling that we just had. Well, that's where we get caught up in emotion. When we can come to that space where we're able to still the mind and where we're able to just soak in the vibration, what we're really doing is we're feeling the feelings of the heart instead of feeling the thoughts of the mind. And when we can feel the feelings of the heart, that's the space where we begin to open up to our pure connection to, you want to call it God, you want to call it source, whatever you want to call it. You're open to that inspiration. And so... As we move through the dimensions and all of the energy that we'll be working with today has that multi-level, multi-layered dimensional energy in it because if we were just to work with something at, say, the the 3D reality, what we're really looking at in 3D is, okay, we have – uh, if you have debt, there's also the belief in abundance, but they they both have to sort of counteract each other. So in order to – some people, I've seen this, this working on some of you as, as I've been moving on the call, it's almost like um, – I, I have to have debt in order to have abundance because uh, everything has an equal and opposite reaction. So you go to one instead of the other, but you're going to the one you don't want. When we can start to broaden our ability to hold a more multidimensional space, we let go of the need to bring in the polarity or the duality. And so then we go, oh, it, then it's just a choice. It becomes, okay, on this plate there's debt and on this plate there's abundance. 
I can choose either one. They're not really related to each other. They are completely separate programs that in the 3D world we've connected to each other. So we're going to be lifting that out. One of the things that I'd like to start out with, though, um, there's a track that I sent in, and it's Permission to Feel. And the reason that I would like to start with that track is so often in that heart space where we begin to connect into the fifth dimension, where we begin to connect out, and, and really the fifth dimension is the gateway to the ascended heart. In many ways, it is the ascended heart, but as we enter into that gateway, it's also bringing out, it's almost like a, a cosmic hub for all of the other expansive spaces and places we could go. It starts by moving through the heart. So many times um, in in different aspects of reality, we try to get there through the head, we try to push it, we try to go mental with it, and if you're in that space where it's just like, I can't anymore, I can't, well, mm. that's true, and and the the I that can't is that ego, that individuated self, and that I is not a bad thing, it's not a negative thing, it's the thing that gives you the flavor of you, yet you're saying, I don't like the flavor that I've, I've become, and that I that created it doesn't really, it's that Einstein quote about you can't solve a problem from the same mind that created it. And so yes. what we're doing is we're bringing the heart's mind into the equation, and that allows you to connect and access all, all of source energy. It 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 presupposes um, anything that's out there and opens you up to pure possibility. And the more of that space you can open up into, while also directing through um, not the want to escape. This is another thing. Like for example, uh, I've shared oftentimes, um, you know, 20 years ago when I'm laid up in bed and having heart problems. You know, for me, it was I wasn't so much focused on I want to be well. It was I don't want to be sick. But the more mm -hmm. I focused on I don't want to be sick or I want to be well because I don't like being sick, the more I stayed in that vibration of I'm just focused on the illness. When we can, and so that's when when you hear, and we might talk about this a little bit as we begin to move into this permission to feel energy. It's permission to feeling what is. So oftentimes we resist what is, whether it's, you know, we feel lonely or we feel sick or we feel indebted or we feel the struggle of just creating our life or, or, or the struggle of maintaining our relationships. And we don't want to feel into that because it feels bad. And we're afraid that if we feel into that bad feeling, that bad feeling will completely eat us alive. It will overcome us. All of our walls, our defenses, everything will come crashing down and we'll be left with nothing. And the reality is... That's the resistance in action. Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barzani, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the U.S. Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now daily where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna to get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join, and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you like to see more of it, Click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.